We are joined now by Mark Gubiza, does a tremendous job as the color analyst on Bally Sports covering the Angels. Gooby, thank you for being with us today. I wanted to get into this first by kind of talking about something you said on the broadcast last night with um, Randazzo. You said that even David Cohn likes Shohei Otani. Usually Yankees <laughs> broadcasters just talk about the Yanks, but Shohei Otani <laughs> has found a place in Cohn's heart. Tell me more. Alana, by the way, great to be with you this morning. Yeah, I went over to see to talk to David Cohn, and we were reminiscing. Oh, 42 years ago, we were roommates in the minor leagues with the Royal. I'm like, oh, that's showing our age a little bit, but we're still with our laughter for Shohei Otani. We're thinking, how does he do it? How does he pitch, throw as hard as he do, and then bat the next day and hit a ball 116.7 miles per hour exit velocity off the bat for a home run? He says, he's, he, he's Joe goes, the dude is just not real. I go, no. Every day I, I got to pinch myself thinking, I don't know if we'll, we'll ever in our lifetime see something like Shohei Otani has been able to do both on the mound and swinging the bat. But you know what? We're in the present, so why not just have some fun? And you joke, too, that the only thing maybe you've ever seen him struggle with is just putting on a jacket when he was pitching and it was freezing in Fenway and he couldn't quite zip it up correctly. I mean, we are witnessing unbelievable history, and it seems fitting, Gooby, that of course he would hit the first home run on the 100th anniversary of the old Yankee Stadium opening up when Babe Ruth did it, the former two-way player. What makes him so effective on any stage? It doesn't make any difference where he is performing. Yeah, Lana, even seeing him yesterday before the game, just to, you know, just the presence he has, the respect he has for the game, but also his work ethic. I mean, you think after that long game yesterday, he actually started the game the day before in Boston with the rain, but yet he's out there ready to swing the bat. Took batting practice outside yesterday at Yankee Stadium, which was something he doesn't do a whole lot of, but I think he understands the history of the game and always that conversation and the comparison him and Babe Ruth. So when he could do something as special as that, I, I read that last night too, and I'm like, only fitting that Shohei would hit a home run on the 100th anniversary. I mean, it's almost impossible to put things together when it comes to Shohei because you just don't think they're real. I know people, we, we can all do stuff with numbers, but to have him hit that home run on the 100th anniversary of the old Yankee Stadium, and it's so close to New Yankee Stadium where the old one was, that uh, it's, it's Shohei. He's a unicorn. That's all we could say. You know, one thing that was even more impressive to me, Gooby, than the home run was what Shohei did in the fifth inning. Single-handedly manufactured a run. He ends up getting on base, then he steals second base, then he gets to third on a throwing error, and then he ends up scoring on a sack fly. I even said on Twitter, I'm like, this is a clinic on how to play baseball. So, yes, he can hit the long ball. Yes, he can strike out 11 guys, but he also does the little things. How important is that? Yeah, I mean, when you look at last year, he was the fastest home to first in baseball. I mean, that's a guy that's a, a pitcher and a power threat doing what he's doing on the base. But that stolen base, he's so quick. It doesn't look like he's really going fast. I always uh, I tell people when I was playing, Willie Wilson had that kind of stride where you just didn't even know he was getting there. Bo Jackson obviously sounded like a freight train, but, you know, Shohei Otani's so quick. And then as soon as that baseball got by at it, it, second base, he's already at third base. So when he turns on the afterburner, that's the thing I think is so cool is watching him run. I know the power and when he throws 101 miles an hour is cool, but I just love his instincts and the way he runs so effortlessly. And so much Shohei and Aaron Judge talk, fittingly, the last two MVPs. But by the way, we can't forget about Mike Trout. He's won the MVP three times. He hit 40 home runs last season in just 119 games. And Gooby, my goodness, he's healthy. How nice is that to have all three of those guys when you're talking about Shohei, Trout, Rendon, healthy? Yeah, hey, I mean, Alana, when you think of Mike Trout, his last home run last year at number 40 went 490 feet to dead center field in Oakland. But the two hits yesterday, 108.5 miles per hour exit velocity and 107. He is crushing the baseball. You know, I think part of it is the whole world, but baseball classic, just to feel. He said the same thing to Mark DeRose. He said, this is something I want to be able to experience. And I think he's kind of willing this team to believe in himself. There's been some ups and downs so far this season. They are over 500. I think they're going to be better because the bullpen pitched exceptionally well last night. I think there's still some upside there. Uh, he's going to play incredible. I, I think when we talk MVPs, you're always going to talk Shoei. You're going to talk Judge. You're going to talk, you know, you know, Vlad Jr. But don't forget Mike Trout. I think he's going to have his best year of his career. And you're seeing some just the adjustments in his hands at the plate, how quick he is with his hands. And he's playing some outstanding defense out in center also.
which is amazing to think of because I always think he has a career every every single year that, that he's in this game. Okay, I really believe, Mark, that the Milwaukee Brewers are missing the services of Hunter Renfro. He leads mm -hmm. the Angels this year with runs batted in. What have you seen from him offensively? By the way, is that Mike Trout or Hunter Renfro? We can never tell the difference. They're almost twins, separated birth himself. But, yeah, I mean, you're, you're seeing the same type of thing. I, I watch him. He talks with – I see him talking with Anthony Rendon. I see him talking with Mike Trout every day. We know how great that arm is in the outfield. He's made some unbelievable plays defensively. But he's squaring up the baseball. Early on, I think he was pressing a little bit. They were pitching him inside. He wasn't getting the barrel of the bat on the ball the first maybe few games of the season. But since that point – Every time there's an RBI scenario, he's hit the ball hard and leading the team in RBIs right now with a team with so many superstars, like you've already mentioned. I really like what I'm seeing. And every day I see him, I'm always afraid to say hi to him because his laser focus is unbelievable. Like, all right, hey, good luck today, Hunter. And I always joke around, hey, goodwill hunting today, all right? And he just laughs and goes, okay, I'll hunt some baseballs today. Yeah, it's almost like talking to a starting pitcher on their start day. Don't you dare speak to Hunter Renfro when he's that locked in. Okay, for everything that's good about the Angels this year, there's one thing that they can improve upon, Mark, and that is their defense. A work in progress. Their 12 errors are tied for fourth most in Major League Baseball. Are they mental errors, physical errors? How can they improve in this area? 100% agree with you on that one, Alano. I think Zach Neto now at the shortstop position, He, I mean, he's only a kid. But he's already solidified the defense because now you have guys playing all over the infield that maybe haven't played a number of these positions. you got Gio Rochelle playing first base right now, never really played their whole lot. We know how good he is at third. Anthony Rendon being in there helps the defense out first and foremost. And now all of a sudden it's a lot better where guys aren't playing in different positions. I think that will get cleaned up. You're exactly right. There's been some games that some plays were made. There were probably six games over 500. But that being said, I think they're finally feeling comfortable in there especially when you have a young shortstop. We see Volpe over there with the Yankees making a difference defensively. You're seeing the same thing with Zach Neto now, everyone in their comfort zone. Yeah, he was just promoted last week as the shortstop. And again, right now, nine and eight, second in the AL West behind the Texas Rangers. Mark Gubaza, we always appreciate your insight. Thanks for taking a few moments to be with us. Thanks a lot. I got to talk about David Cohn and, and Shohei Otani today. He'll probably <laughs> even have some more funny stuff to say. He's the best. Oh, I will, I will be listening for sure that you can, you can guarantee that. Thank you, Len. I appreciate it.